Now to the title of my paper, The Future of Baptist Seminaries in Africa. Why do I choose to talk about the future of Baptist seminaries in Africa and not about the history? That is perhaps because Africa respects and value wisdom that come with age. There's a Yoruba proverb that says, Be on Monday, Bange, Guinea, New Ibo, Abalaba, Law, my BT, your Wussy. Which translates means literally, if a child is cutting down a tree in the forest, it is the elder who knows where it is going to fall. The child can cut the tree because it's very energetic and very strong, but it is the elders who knows where the tree will likely fall. That means that elders are trusted and expected to understand trends so as to design and prepare for the future. It is not very helpful to neglect past lessons and, and present realities in an attempt to project into the future. I'm happy to note that some other persons have been commissioned to write on various other aspects of Baptist seminaries in Africa, the history and the highlight of the present realities. What I'm going to do is to briefly talk about the theology of the church is very vital. Baptists are evangelical Christians with an historical, ecclesiastical uh, persuasion. We have a special understanding of church life and church work. I think it's one of the things that distinguishes us as a people of God. And so I would like to talk very briefly about our understanding of the church. Then I would like to comment briefly also on how leadership training is to sustain a flourishing church in Africa. And, but we are going to spend more of my time on two areas. Number one, some critical issues about the future of Baptist seminaries in Africa. And as you see now, if you are asked to consider one issue that you consider most critical for the future of Baptist work of Baptist theological seminaries in Africa, what will that issue be? If you are, to, you are asked to mention one issue, one critical issue about the future of Baptist seminaries in Africa, what will that be? And why have you chosen that? And how will that affect Baptist work and Baptist ministry? And how should we respond to that? That is the question that I'm going to ask us to discuss at the end of my presentation. And I'm going to close with some other items that I call an agenda for the future for Baptist seminaries in Africa. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19 is very critical for understanding of the church. The reply of Jesus, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gate of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Africa must accept Jesus as our Lord. I think that the first and the most important task of the church in Africa is to confess the lordship and supremacy of Jesus over and above all the gods and goddesses in Africa. The church is to worship Jesus and celebrate his power over all tyrants troubling Africa. This confession of the lordship of Jesus is necessary because, due to globalization, Africa is now experiencing pluralism of ideologies, philosophies, and religions. The church in Africa must reject imagined philosophical relativism and theological universalism. Contemporary African life is characterized by economic poverty, social injustice, political instability, and religious ferment. The church in Africa has a spiritually challenging mandate to confront and overpower human and superhuman forces, agents and structures of evil, sin, and wickedness that are responsible for hunger, diseases, corruption, dehumanization, misgovernment, and godlessness in the continent. Some imperatives of the mission facing the African church include helping the society in human development, responsible citizenship, the practice of servant leadership, as well as theological authenticity. I think this is the context of our theological education in Africa, and we must be very conscious of that as we talk about the future. Any church talk in Africa without the dimension of the kingdom of God is myopic, superficial, and inadequate. The church is the symbol of the present and future hope 
in Africa. The role of the church in Africa is eschatological in the sense that it includes helping to establish the kingdom of God in the hearts of people and the lives of people. Oh, that the kingdom of God will come to Africa through the church and through the theological education. The kingdom of God comes into a people and they are giving hope for time and eternity when the sinner is redeemed, when the hungry is fed, when the sick is healed, and when the demonized is delivered. Yet, beyond the activities meant for the fulfillment of the contemporary African society, the church is the symbol of the future, the end of history. The church must give hope to Africa. That is a little about the need for the church to flourish in Africa. So what kind of leadership training do we need to sustain a flourishing church in Africa? One assumption of this presentation is that the nature and quality of presentation of church leaders, as well as other gospel workers today, will contribute very, very significantly to the life, earth, and work of the church tomorrow. It is for this reason that the necessary component of successful evangelization and mission in a land is to establish a system and institution of training, developing, and equipping indigenous, indigenous leaders. I would like us to reflect on the type of theological educational process that can help to build and maintain flourishing church in our continent. I would like to focus on the training environment, what model of theological institution, the training program, the curriculum, the training facilitator, the teachers, and the training facilities, library, and ICT. I'm happy that several other aspects of this are already being highlighted and will be done by other presenters in the course of this network. With regards to a model of theological institution, one of the problems of the model th that many of us are working with is that they limit theological education to relationship with the church. Sometimes we focus so much on the candidates that are being prepared without the consciousness that they are being prepared to serve the church and the church is meant to transform the society. So in contemporary educational studies, theological institutions have been variously classified as classical, confessional, vocational, missional, contextual, and spiritual by a number of specialists. I have added a model of theological education in Africa as a kingdom model that is focused on empowering for spiritual welfare with the deserts as the context and dynamics as the emphasis. And this I've emphasized a number of times. A study of some biblical narratives of the call and commission of people for ministry shows that God takes time to train and prepare them to lead his people. God trained Moses for 40 years in the desert. Apostle Paul spent some time in Arabia, the Syrian desert, between his conversion and ministerial activities. Even the Lord Jesus Christ prepared for public ministry, fasting for 40 days and 40 nights in the desert. I'm not proposing that we create modern day deserts to train gospel ministers. But I think that every theological institution ought to be a desert in terms of a place of discipline, a place of reflection, a place of power encounter, and a place of empowerment. If our students are not adequately prepared spiritually for ministry, society there will turn them to something different from what we we'll expect them to be. So our teaching learning process must be a place of empowerment. Again, in African culture, that is how priests were prepared when they took them to groups. They take them there, they perform some rituals there, and then they empower them. So we also must see theological educational process as an empowering process. Now, I would like Baptist theological institutions in Africa to consider what it means for theological institutions to function like a desert as a place for ministerial preparation. What did God do to Moses before he went to lead Israelites? What happened to Jesus before he led? What happened to Paul in the desert? The curriculum of theological education. Our curriculum needs to be very balanced, church-related, student-centered, and also societal-friendly. 
A year, few years ago, somebody wrote that the fundamental challenge of theological education worldwide is the need to address the life and work, that is the practices of the church in its various cultural and political settings, and not just simply its beliefs. I think the time has come for theological institutions in Africa to rework and enrich the curriculum inherited from the West and to help strengthen leaders who will lead churches to function effectively in worship, warfare, and service. We have a good heritage of the cur curriculum of theological education that we have inherited. But when those curriculum, curricula were designed initially, they did not have African in mind. They, they had in mind some other context. The time has come for us to rewrite and reflect our context very strongly. The entire curriculum of theological education in Africa ought to be strong on kingdom motif. It should be rich in how to help students to discover the secrets of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom, and the keys of the kingdom. Apostle Paul elaborated briefly on the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ in a number of passages, and that also has to be done to help our students. I'm saying that because it appears as if some other religions uh, have a better understanding about this kingdom approach to work and also to life and ministry. With regards to a facilitator, facilitation of theological education, a theological institution is not only what students are, it is also what the faculty is. A group faculty will provide a good learning environment conducive for information dissemination, as well as formation of hearts, head, and arms of students, such that we help to train and equip learners theologically and practically. The qualifications of theological education educators are put here. But in my next paragraph, I have this concern, which gladdens my heart that the previous person spoke so much about that. But the identity of the theological educator in Africa is one that calls for reflection. Is the theological educator a lecturer? That's what we call them now. A lecturer, an educator, a teacher, a professor, an equiper, and likely, lastly, a discipler. Our seminary has just revised our faculty handbook, and we are now trying to help every lecturer to function essentially as a discipler, and not just as a lecturer. That functioning as a lecturer is a model from secular institutions, which is not exactly what we are doing. Yes, they are lecturing like others, but for the sake and for the purpose of discipleship. The lecturing itself must not become the end of theological educational process. So our lecturers are called lecturers like in secular academic institutions, and so are recognized primarily as facilitators of knowledge. This image, which more often overemphasizes their cognitive work over and against the affective and the behavioral, is a matter of concern by church leaders in Africa. Baptist theological institutions in Africa must discover what it means for a theological educator to be a teacher of the word of God and a discipler and equipper of learners. What we need is in every course, let every course be taught from biblical perspective, let every course be taught as an avenue for spiritual formation and discipleship. If we do that, I think it's going to help us to be able to move forward. But this is something that needs to be explored and something that needs to be put into practice. Now, what are the training resources and facilities that are needed for theological education in Africa? These resources can be classified into four categories. The first category, resources for biblical studies, introdu biblical introduction, biblical languages, biblical hermeneutics, biblical archaeology, and biblical theology. The Bible is the chief source for theological education and ministerial training among evangelicals because a minister of the gospel is essentially a minister of the word of God. So the Bible is the supreme source to study and acquire the power of God to train and equip the church, equip people to lead churches effectively in worship and warfare and service and other good works. For our seminary in Ogumosho, we ask that in the list of all the materials for every course, the Bible must be number one. And our preferred version is the NIV or RSV. In every syllabus, the Bible is the number one source to be used to teach the course. Of course, to be used to evaluate all other sources of knowledge. Secondly, 
There's no doubt that Africa will continue to benefit enormously from the Western textbooks for references, historical reviews, and other purposes. So we want to thank God for Western organizations who continue to provide resources for us. This, uh, this is a very great help for us, and that should continue. Thirdly, the time has come for African church leaders, educators, and scholars to be assisted and equipped to develop materials that will be contextually relevant to Africa, yet faithful to biblical revelation. We need to move one step beyond where we are now to create opportunities and avenues for African scholars to write so that those materials can be the primary sources for our students and then other materials can serve as reference materials. And we have started. Our seminary has now has a publishing unit and we have almost about 25 titles that we have published. Fourthly and finally, African Theological Educational System needs assistance for its services to be backed and enhanced with technology. Regular power sup supply, internet access, and website presence are not optional in contemporary electronic and globalized world. Theological institutions must train and equip leaders to be effective in the use of technology to communicate and propagate the gospel and to minister in the contemporary time. Let me now come to critical issues about the future of Baptist seminaries in Africa. In the past 10 years, I've been involved in documentation of historical development of three important Baptist organizations in Nigeria. Interestingly, it has been my task to contribute to the sections on the future of Baptist work for the three publications. And so learning from those publications, I would like to make some comments on the following areas. Number one, preservation of Baptist identity and the critical issues facing Baptist seminaries in Africa. I think the first and the foremost is the preservation of Baptist identity. Number two, commitment to the promotion of evangelical faith and fellowship. Promotion of evangelical faith and fellowship. Number three, faithfulness to aspiration of the church. Faithfulness to church aspiration. Number four, responding to a holistic African context. Responding, responding responsibly to holistic African context. Number five, maintaining missional perspective. Maintaining missional perspective. Number six, enhancing our collaboration and networking. Enhancing our collaboration and networking. And finally, advancing the kingdom of God. I begin with preservation of Baptist identity. The contemporary religious atmosphere of Africa is very chaotic. In today's globalized world, it is tempting and easy for the Baptist faith to be lost in the ecumenical relationships with other churches and denominations. The president of the Nigerian Baptist Convention, who is the visitor to our seminary, is now the president of Christian Association of Nigeria. So it's a time of great fellowship for us. But the wind of Pentecostalism and charismatism has deposited so much dust on biblical doctrinal truth and ecclesiastical practices. As we renew our faith and spirituality, we must not forget that the Lord has blessed us, Baptists, with a heritage that is worth preserving and that is worth sharing. I was a pure science university student in 1981 when I bought What Baptists Believe by Eshel Hobbes. And I read it and that got me settled as a Baptist. I felt like this is, this is okay for me. I felt good with this. I call on us, theological education leaders, to lead our institutions, our teachers, our students, and our alumni to value and cherish our simple but profoundly deep Baptist faith, Baptist vitality, and Baptist heritage. I think the best that a Christian can be is to be a Baptist. We cannot call it with those who don't want to be Baptist. But for us who are Baptist, I think we should thank God for the heritage we have and we should be ready to preserve it. And theological institutions have that privilege because we are the ones who understand the depth of Baptist heritage. So let us preserve, preserve it. Number two, commitment to promotion of evangelical faith and fellowship. Baptists are a significant part of the Protestant evangelical family. 
The critical affirmations of evangelical traditions are, number one, personal conversion and a vigorous moral life. Number two, the Bible as the true revelation of God to guide conviction and behavior. Number three, zeal to disseminate the Christian faith, which is missions. And number four, emphasis on crucifixion of Jesus and resurrection. Uh, all of us may not agree on what constitutes evangelicalism because I have I've read debates and arguments, but I know that uh, we don't have many differences. It's just that how it is, these evangelical essentials are distilled can be a challenge uh, among evangelicals. I would like African evangelical theological educators to participate actively in evangelical fellowships so that together we can stand against the growing liberalism, materialism, nominalism, and postmodernism of our age. I beg us, let us not be exclusive. Let us rise above both exclusive tendencies. I, organizations that have doctrinal persuasions like ours, let us collaborate with them. And I'm moving on to, okay, let me move on to church aspiration now. Faithfulness to church aspiration. Every Christian educational institution exists to glorify God and theological schools are no exception. Seminaries are first of all and ultimately accountable to God through the body of Christ over and against the academic community. The task of spiritual formation must be consciously elevated above academic and ministerial formation. We must be very passionate to be faithful to God and beware of inordinate desire for recognition that comes through affiliation with an accreditation from secular universities. Beloved, don't let secular universities overwhelm us. I beg us in the name of God. Such that can compromise our call, blow our vision, and derail the redeeming work of God in Africa. Universities are good places to study. They have their own benefits. But let seminaries that are set up to be God's workers be faithful to God in Christ who has caused the church to exist. Why we need to submit to accreditation and affiliation with evangelical agencies so as to enhance the quality of our educational services, we must intentionally and energetically focus on the training of the hearts of our students. The letter kills. It is the spirit that gives life. Churches are never impressed nor helped with half-baked ministers who are academic giants, but spiritual and moral dwarfs. That will not help churches. That will not impress churches. Churches want men of God, men of the word of God, men of prayer, men of honor, men of integrity, who will preach the gospel, lead them in spiritual redemption, lead them in nurture, and prepare them for the kingdom of God. I'm happy that Nigerian Baptist Convention decided not to convert our own seminary to a university. We are trying to afflate with our own university, but then they want us to remain as a seminary. Responding to holistic African context. The African worldview is holistic. Our concept of reality is also comprehensive. We must reject the secular, sacred secular divide. The Christian education and life we have inherited and practiced has been largely otherworldly. Our theological enterprise has been politically shy. The privatizing individualistic tendencies of our religious expressions has made us relevant to some churchly but illegitimate aspirations of our people. Our theological education curriculum and ministerial training must produce African ministers and citizens who can contribute to the aspiration of Africa for social harmony, economic buoyancy, cultural restoration, and political orientation. We have centered our work around preaching. We established churches and such other organizations. Teaching, we establish educational institutions. Healing, we establish hospitals. Preaching, teaching, and healing. Very good, but we must not forget that we have a social responsibility as a very important dimension of the contribution of the church to the work of the gospel and society in Africa. 
Number five, we must maintain missional perspective. While it is in order for some theological educators to specialize in evangelism and missions, our entire theological educational curriculum must become more missional. Worship, fellowship, discipleship training and missions are great tasks of the church. The theological educational system of Africa must be reinvented, reapproached, and rearranged to serve and enable the church to carry out the Great Commission. Every specialization, every training program, every course of study has to emphasize missions, witnessing to win soul and lifestyle evangelism and the like. Theological institutions must keep the fire of evangelism burning in Baptist hearts and lives, lives in churches and organizations in Africa. Let me now comment on collaboration and networking. I'm happy that Dr. Chuga did that yesterday. We spoke on the same topic. The General Baptist Convention has 11 theological institutions. The three of us who are here are not the only theological institutions of our convention. We have 11 altogether. About 10 years ago, we tried to trim them to reduce the number to six or thereabouts. It didn't work out. There's a very strong agitation for more, as a matter of fact. But for now, we are satisfied with the 10 or 11. So there's a collaboration among our 10 theological institutions, but it must go beyond that. Partnership is the way God works, the way God builds lives, and the way God advances societies. God invited the heavenly council, council to join him to make human beings. The writer of Hebrews calls us to repent to perseverance with let us exhortation. Four times in Hebrews chapter 10, he spoke about let us, let us, and let us. No one builds alone, according to Nehemiah 2.18. Baptist theological institutions should not work alone. Please, let us open up to learn from others. Let others also learn from us. We lose too much when we bear our bodies alone. There is plenty of godly and practical wisdom in the Yoruba proverb. Kafiyowo, weowo, nyowo fima which means it is through rubbing and washing together that ants become clean. You never can tell the amount of encouragement you are going to receive when you come to a forum like this. But when you are on your own, struggling with your problems, you are going to be overwhelmed. But when you come like this and you interact with others, the burdens are shared, the burdens are lifted. And even God speaks. I've been wondering how to go about my 60th birthday anniversary. And just this morning, God gave me a very, very powerful inspiration through one of the presentations this morning. There is something that happens when we come together like this, or like when you are just alone in your own closet, struggling with how to survive and how to keep your institution going. Every seminary should participate in national and regional meetings. Institutional advancement is much more difficult to achieve when you keep away from attending conferences because of lack of finance. I have come to the realization that our most serious problem in Africa is not finance. Finance is a critical need, but it's not the most critical. The most critical is poverty of commitment to the ideals of the kingdom of God. I want to challenge every head of Baptist theological institution here to take up this matter with prayer and fasting. If in all seriousness you have come to recognize finance as a very serious problem, please take it up with prayer. We must break this bond of poverty that tends to slow down the work of God in our hands. Seventh and finally, advancing the work of God in Africa. The world is becoming more pragmatic. People are becoming more difficult to win for God in Christ. Satan is becoming more desperate. Evil, wickedness, and sin are on the ascendancy in many parts of the world. African Baptist theological educators must adopt a spiritual militant warfare approach. Since the days of John the Baptist, and some Baptists believe that that is where we get our name. I know many of you don't believe that. Since the days of John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus, the kingdom of God has been advancing through spiritual violence. Africa is at, at a crossroads. We have publicly confessed Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We have renounced the forces and agents of evil in our land. We have rejected the power and offer of witchcraft. We must, now is the time to seek the secret of the kingdom and place the keys of the kingdom on the hands of our students and our graduates. I ask us 
to align ourselves with the prophecy and the promise of the master. I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Let me conclude with an agenda for the future. Where do we go from here and how do we go there? I would like to ask the International Mission Board to be ready to partner with us collectively and individually as the Lord enables, provides, and leads you while we take responsibility for continuing and for the evangelization of our continent through dynamic theological education. We want to thank God for the rethink about the need for the IMB to continue to evolve in theological education. We have been praying that God will bring that realization and God has answered our prayer. To God be the glory. Some of the questions that we will have to wrestle with in subsequent years as Baptist seminaries in Africa as, in Afri in Africa, as we face the future are, number one, institutional mission. How do we formulate and operationalize mission statements and strategic plans to continue the task of evangelization of Africa? And what of the sustainability of Christian faith in our dear continents in view of emerging pluralism and Islamic aggression. We must go back to the basics. Our entire theological educational system, what is it doing to evangelize Africa? This is the basic question we must ask. Number two, academic and administrative competencies. The task before seminaries now and in the future requires competent human resources. How do we train and retrain our staff for spiritual buoyancy, academic cutting edge, administrative and professional proficiency. I don't know if that does not sound tautological. Anyway, I said it. Number three, financial and material resources. The level of material poverty of many African nations is a matter of concern. It will be naive not to recognize the challenge in our attempts to offer quality ministerial training of international quality and with global best practices in an environment of crippling poverty. How do we finance theological education in contemporary Africa? What revenue and fundraising strategies are recommendable in our context? We must talk about the finance. Number four, human capital and resources. Human capital is the most important resource of any organization. African Baptist seminaries need to be subjected to organizational capacity assessments. How do we recruit, develop, and retain God-fearing but competent academic, senior administrative, and other support staff? Many heads of our institutions are ministers and theologians with little managerial training and experience. What training programs can we provide for them? What helped me the most in seminary leadership it's not only what I observe as a lecturer, but in 2014, I was invited by overseas council to attend a course in the US on Foundation for Leadership in Theological Education. And I was there with the president of the seminary in South Africa. He was actually one of the personnel. That helped me a lot. When we'll appoint a PhD holder in systematic theology that I was, to come ahead of theological school without giving the training, I think we are assuming too much. We are assuming too, too much. What are we going to do to help people who are going to be asked to lead our theological schools to give them the training that they need to be able to function? Some people don't know what to do until the end of their term, when it is too late, and they will have to move out because we work rotational system. ICT and other facilities. The industrialized world is fully developed with regular power supply. When I was in the US, everything they taught me on the computer worked. When I go back to Bumashaw, many of the things did not work. <laughs> power supply is epileptic. It takes forever more for computers to boot because they are going on and off most of the time. The educational process in the West are largely digitalized. How can we have African Baptist seminaries to move towards computerization of admission process administration, research, technology-enabled research, learning, and examination. We lost a research grant that was substantial recently because of the problem of internet and power supply in our seminary. Many lecture rooms are equivalent of teaching under the mango, under trees. You know, my theology is called theology under the mango, mango tree, and some students thought it is literal, actually. 
the weak purchasing power of our currencies will not give us access to current books and journals obtainable through online marketing. What is the way out? Every small book is going to cost you $20, $30, $40, $50. How do we have money? That is the equivalent of salary of some of our staff. <laughs> Academic programs. It is important for training programs to integrate the mission of the institution. African Baptist theological educators have been encouraged to, re to redesign their curricula for greater contextual relevance. The truth is that not many have the personnel with expertise for curriculum design, development, implementation, and review. How do we go about it? After 120 years, our seminary were able to turn out one PhD holder in, in curriculum and evaluation. A second person is being developed now for curriculum um, design or something. So we are the personnel to do this for us if this is what we need to do ourselves. Finally, student services. Theological education must not become elitist. It's not elitist, elitist but affordable enough to train more ministers and all church members for kingdom expansion. The time has come for theological institutions to equip the whole church with the whole gospel for the whole world. Baptist seminaries in Africa cannot afford commercial rates like private universities, yet they are expected to deliver services of comparable quality. How do we make good quality bricks with our straw? And where do we get scholarship? to help indigent students. Our seminary has 1,070 students, about 750 residential students, about 250 uh, part-time students who go and come in January and in June. But among all of this, all of the scholarship program we offer is only for about, all together, churches, everybody is about 100 students. How do you have a scholarship program for only 10% of the student body? That is grossly inadequate by any standard. But we are at the resources to get scholarship assistance for our students. These, to me, are some of the issues that we will have to face as we work for theological institutions to move Baptist work and ministry forward. So again, my question for reflection, what, in your own opinion, is the most critical issue about the future of Baptist seminaries in Africa, and why? And how will that affect theological education and institution? And how do we respond to that? Thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening to me. The Lord bless us and help us to fulfill this ministry into which we have been called. Thank you. Thank you.